Okay, so now this is one of the many protests that have been going on and it's gone viral across all social media platforms, showing irate Nigerians who are clearly at the brink of losing it, right? With the non-ending queues of, uh, to access um, one's hard-earned money coupled with the hiked price of fuel and transportation, it is clear that this scarcity is having such a negative impact on us as Nigerians. Now, Nigerians across the country are agitated. The situation seems to be getting worse. And yet, no aid seems to be in sight. Now, we cannot um, stop talking about this and we cannot continue this way. And that's why we're asking, what is the way forward, right? Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-8463. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. So I have had this conversation right up from Tuesday up until yesterday. You know, thankfully, both uh, all three of you were not on set. I would like to, first of all, hear how this is affecting you. Then how, I mean, Uti might be far away in the UK. I am very sure this is also impacting her. You know, a lot of people... She, um, her phone would definitely just be buzzing. Um, um, I, I, I saw a video online. A guy in the bank in Delta State actually slumped and died. Now, he was queuing for hours, according to um, what's it called, the report from the public officer, Bright Edefe, that confirmed the death. He was actually queuing, not even this time around, not even for money. He was queuing to get his ATM card, Right? And he, he was there for hours. All of a sudden, he slumped and he was confirmed dead. That's, that's like one too many. Now, there were protesters in the Oyo that attempted, they vandalized the secretariat, the Oyo secretariat, vandalized it in an attempt to gain entrance into the governor's office. So this thing that we're talking about, it is, you know, I don't know how our leaders are able to sleep amidst all of these things because you are not the person that will be affected at the end of the day we are the ones that would feel the brunt because now me driving on the road i'm quite scared because anything can happen they pick up stones smash my windows rob me and move on you know and that is exactly what i foresee happening just like the way people were agitated during the answers um the aftermath of the answers that now led into what's it called vandalizing yeah, looting and, 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 and looting all and all of that but let me hear um, Uti so then I'll come to you, Alero and, and Glory. Uti, what are your thoughts? You know, how do you think this is affecting Nigerians and how is it affecting you? I mean, first of all, it's just a heightened sense of frustration. I mean, we've been dealing with a fuel scarcity. Let me just call it an unending fuel scarcity because now I can't even remember how many months it's been that long. Almost a year. We've been dealing with an unending fuel scarcity that one layer of hardship. We're dealing with a hike in prices, we're dealing with inflation, we're dealing with money issues, right? Then to crown it all off, the little money you now even have, you can't access it. I mean, it's just, I, I want to put this akin to the straw that broke the camel's back. It's just one too many, right? Like I was saying earlier, it doesn't matter how prone I Nigeria you are. At this point in time, you can't but agree that man, Nigeria, I mean, it takes the biscuit. It just is like we're out for the lives of Nigerians. And it's painful to see because it is, as I said, it's orchestrated. It, this is simply a botching implementation. There is nothing new to changing of, of currency, changing of notes. It happens in countries all over the world. This is simply an implementation problem. And so is, is, this impl that, is this implementation, Uti? One minute. Is this implementation? Was it called the? Um, is it ta the 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 fault rather now for this implementation? The lack of um, um, effective uh, implementation. Is it really the banks' fault? Because people are actually targeting the banks. Is it from the bank? Is this error from the bank? Or where exactly can we pinpoint this sure. this this um, what's it called uh, ineffective implementation that is going on right now? So, I mean, there are different players and stakeholders in this game, right? And every single organization, at least from the banks, everybody's doing everything that they can, right? But at the end of the day, if there's not enough money out there, so I, I even thought that these, these notes were not being printed in Nigeria. Seeing the story today where the president said that the minting company, these notes are being printed in Nigeria, it gives me further cause for, for concern. But the reality of it is this 
whole process of changing notes. It is a decision, right? Like any other business decision, we are going to make a change. The process of change management comes into play. Mm -hmm. You assess the needs and impact and the risks around what you are, the, pro the, the project you want to implement. And you address it systematically so that you don't end up with a botched um, rollout. And that's what this is. The rollout has botched because today we have, um, let's first of all even look at the system. From a cash management perspective, we have all had access to Naira. We've never had this problem before. The distribution network via the banks, via the ATMs, we've not had this problem before. So when we say that we're blaming the banks, for example, right? This is not a new process for banks. The concept of collecting money and distributing money and putting cash in ATMs and paying cash over the counter is not by any chance a new process. So by the process of elimination, please, where would the pro problem lie? So when it comes to the change management, there is a problem. Because the fact is, you are getting one thing for another. If the other is available and the other one is collected efficiently, this thing should go off without a hit. So can we shine a spotlight on there and say that all of a sudden, the experts in cash distribution are magically overnight no longer the experts? I'll leave it there. You know, I, I, I'll come back to you because there was a statement you made, but I want to hear the other ladies, Alero and um, Glory. A statement you made about, we have all had access to Naira. I put a clause there when you, wrote, when you said it, but not mint. We've not all had access to new, new Nairas because there is definitely, nobody's going to tell me differently, there's definitely a cabal that is, uh, that, is, that is making sure that they want to milk this process of this new Naira notes that is being reintroduced into the system. Because how is it possible that we cannot get the notes from banks and ATMs and they are spraying it all over parties? Okay. But let me hear your thoughts, Alero and um, Gloria. Alero, you, you comment, please. I mean, for, for me, as, what, what has been just been ringing in my head is that the pressure of um, the way things are so have been tilting towards the negative side for Nigerians, mostly since 2020 to now, has been too much. At first, we were struggling with the um, um, the dollar and pounds rates increasing, heading up to almost 900 naira per pound as at last year. The Nigerians were suffering with that because that one alone made the, the cost of, of livelihood go up. The cost of food had gone up. Everything, everything. everything had gone up. We were managing that, being the Nigerians that we are, always ready to, you know, there's hot water while still fighting and moving forward. Now again, last year, the issue of the fuel scarcity, which typically for Nigerians, we feel like when this happens a couple of weeks and, and, it, and it will die off. It hasn't still gone. It's almost one year. And then now a huge crisis with the Naira redesign that is now making another... In fact, this one is now so chaotic because with all of these things compounded together, food is expensive, you're, you're not able to go around about your livelihood. It's becoming harder for Nigerians to manage. It's now so bad that we are no longer looking at the government or looking at the policies that have been put in place to cost this. Now we're, looking, we're not looking at each other. Hmm. We're not fighting one another. It's not looking like... Um, when you watch all those horror movies with zombies, you know, everybody's just no, you eating, know, each other. eating each other up. And that's what it's looking like. And it's so scary that we don't even know what will happen to us. Like you said, you don't even know the next thing that will happen with you in traffic. Because these guys are on the streets. These guys are the ones that will come when you're in traffic, try to clean your windows or do... Because everybody is, is feeling the brunt right now. Like you said, not everybody that have access to this cash. I haven't... I think the, the one I saw was the 200 naira note, which was a while back. Today, it really affected me today. I mean, all this while, remember the lady that called in on Tuesday that said her neighbors are actually begging for pure water. They haven't even seen food to eat. So yes, this chaos is happening. In fact, I'm praying it doesn't become worse than this. But this is human beings fighting at ATM stands. Now, they are fighting at gas Few stations. Seasons. What happens if fire happened, maybe there's a fire accident there and then before you know, it's another story entirely. Nigerians are frustrated. Nigerians are tired. It's now becoming so hard for us to be patriotic. If, I mean, like Glory said, everybody, everybody is jack mine. Mm. Because the youths that are, they are willing to stay back to fight are no longer having the the motivation. The, yes, and it's <laughs> for me, it's scary, to be honest. I really don't know what, what else to do or say because we've been talking. Mm. But hopefully, we'll continue to talk and make sure that one day 
our solution will come. But in the meantime, we just keep pushing and keep praying and keep hoping that this um, scarcity of Naira actually really stops. Mostly the, this first scarcity is actually ridiculous. One, 335. I priced it and they gave me 3500 for 10 liters. So that's at 350 like, But let me hear your thoughts. <laughs> um, I've had a first-hand experience of this. And more so because I'm also in a position where I, I have people management. I have to manage people. So I can cope with my own, with what is going on. I'm also trying to, you know... Um, pump up the energy, positive energy um, to people around me. So just imagine um, you wanting to get Naira from POS and they're charging 2,000 Naira. So you're literally Naira, local currency, buying your own currency. So you're working hard to earn a living. Um, inflation is going crazy. And still, to even get that money, which you've worked hard for, you're still paying for it. What, how, can, how else can you define suffering? It's I, I wish there is a word to quantify suffering or another word to really express it. We are going through a lot. And then again, I think, I don't know if this is another strategy of the government to implement the cashless policy. Because um, some of the feedback I've gotten from um, people, especially those taking public transport, are like, people have gotten to the extent of begging, okay, can I do transfer, even with public transporters, which is difficult, but some people are now gradually becoming open-minded. So it's also, um, maybe we let us also be a little open-minded for ourselves, not because of the government. The government has failed us several times, but there is also a way to make this not escalate out of hand, right? So if we can also be open-minded, because that's how else can we solve the current situation? Obviously, the government is playing the blame games. The president is coming to say the banks are inefficient, this is going on. They, talk, they are all playing the blame game, and we are the ones suffering. So how can we help ourselves? Maybe Nigerians can be more open-minded. Since if it's the transfer, public transporter, please be open-minded. If someone says, I don't have cash, help me. I need to go to this location. Let me do a transfer. Be open-minded. I said transfer. You, that supplier, someone say, please, though, people are no longer giving cash. It's transfer. Can I transfer? Because my buyers are paying me through transfers. Accept it. Let's be open and make the situation a little better till when the government decides to listen to us. So companies now, for me personally, I'm pushing more the hybrid model, no, no longer because of COVID, but because staffs are now finding it difficult to um, transit to work. So let's just start looking for ways to make the situation better for us because the government, they are not ready to do anything. That's the truth. Because how will they not foresee this? Data, that's another problem with the government. We don't have data in this country. How do you want to roll out new currency and you don't foresee this kind of things? Data would have shown you that if you don't um, enroll, um, bring out this quantity of the currency, this challenge so, is... But are you really be buying the, uh, that, 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 um, that, that uh, notion that has been going around? Uti, help me here. Are, are you guys buying that notion that CBN on their produced um, currency what because no wait now this let country. us let us be clear because i don't i do not i don't think i want to buy that that idea because for me what i see the madness when i see that people the money that everybody is looking for so desperately and they can't find it and you now see people throwing bundles that's, in parties it tells me that this is not a function of um, what's it called scarcity yeah. of the currency yep. this is a function of some people just deliberately trying in an attempt to to cause because mm -hmm. now there are different um uh, theories there are different theories that this thing is trying to get us to drive us to the point where there is a uh, what's it called an uproar agitation, agitation yes. that and we now yes, they will postpone the yes. elections uh, so, so so that is one theory going yeah. on there's another theory of this money is, is done deliberately targeted at certain political party uh, people so that they, all this money politics that Deliberate, happened, so. that used to happen in our uh, political process is not happening in this particular political process. That is another theory. There's a theory about mm. targeting people that have kept fraudulent kinds of income that they're trying to now trap yeah. back into the okay. system. That's another theory. So there is a lot of theories so happening much. there. But I, 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 will, I, I stand to, to be corrected. I, I do not believe that it is for shortage of ink, uh, money that this currency scarcity is happening. Because if it's shortage of money, even the people spraying we will not have seen any of those kind of videos surfacing online. Um, sure. Oh, please permit me. I, I, I wish um, Uti can help us answer this question. Because um, I know you talked about the banks. So um, the government, obviously the banks are 
a medium through which the government rolls out this new note. So when you see people with this volume, when there are others with literally none, who do we blame at this point? Because they are the medium. So I feel like the banks also have, have a role to play. Maybe they did not foresee the extent to which this, is, this was going to. Maybe they thought CBN was going to release more notes, right? So they yeah, uh, mismanaged the, the first ones, set. the first set. That's okay. just also how I see it. So that's where the <laughs> bank management is coming. <laughs> Uti, I'm coming back to you. Let's go on a very short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, so if you just tuned in, um, we're discussing the Naira redesign and we're asking how it's affecting Nigerians. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at Weisho Africa 1 with the hashtag Weisho. Uti, you wanted to help us out here with the question that Glory asked. Do you think it's a function of mismanaged funds? Maybe they did not think. So that's why those people... Something where... Hello? Oh... I said something when I spoke the first time. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. I said, I said something when I spoke the first time. I said, the banks have been experts at cash management. Before this change, you went to the ATM, money came out. You went to the bank to collect money, money came out. You collected cash. So, all of a sudden, the experts woke up one day and they don't know their jobs anymore. No, I just want somebody to answer that question for me. So we just woke up one day and all of a sudden, everybody just decided right across the whole industry that we don't know our jobs anymore. We don't know how to drive a bullion van. We don't know how to find the center to pick up the money. They don't know how to load ATMs. I'm, I'm just asking these questions because... I believe from the inception of ATMs, ATMs have been working in Nigeria. So when we throw these questions around, I say it. Is it the system? Or is it the change management process? Or is it the source? I will simply ask the questions. Because it's important that we stop to think about these things. It's easy to just say, oh, the people that are spraying money in parties, where are they getting the money from? We have always sprayed money at parties. Might I add? But but Uti, even me, when it became illegal, people yeah, were still spraying people money were still at spraying, parties. But what? Uti, even when it became illegal, Uti, people let, were still spraying money at parties. Uti, you know that you know that it 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 is during this money scarcity that it, it occurred to me that it's been a long time they gave me mint in the banks, but when people want to get mint, they call certain account officers and they give them mint. You know, because before I could walk into a banking hall and they would pay me with brand new notes. You, you who are, who are, you that are talking, have you ever come and gotten mint? You said what? Who are, have you ever, this thing you are saying, this thing you are saying, is not them say them say, have you ever done it? Have I ever have done what? Have you account officer and gotten mint? Yes, now. How many times have you done it? I've done it. How many times? Not too much. I don't spray money in parties. <laughs> I don't have to. <laughs> So, so it's, it's basically so the change. The mint that is sprayed, 90%, 95% of the mint that is sprayed at parties is bought at parties. Who gives them the money? And ask yourself where the source of that money is. So, we ask, okay. That's what we're asking. So, that's so, what we're so asking. now, the question I have now, so is it, is it possible that maybe they got this from CBN directly? Because banks are the medium through which so CBN rolls out this. And, but okay. I'm simply asking you to query the facts as they are presented to you. It's up to you to make the deductions you want to make. But like I said, it's interesting that overnight, the experts at cash distribution all of a sudden don't know their jobs. Hmm. But these ATM stands were not producing money. If typically on a good day, you go to the bank and you get money. You go to the ATM stand and you put your card and you're able to withdraw money. But now you're not able to. That's, that's where we are heading to right now. And let me even say to you that even these ATMs dispensing money, there are specific ATMs that only dispense mint. So I go there because me, I like, I like clean money. I don't like dirty money. So it's almost like the mint are, still, are kept for, what's it called? A kind of class of people. 
Uti, I'm not accusing anybody. But I'm saying that it's been a long time you walked into a banking hall and you were giving mint. Mm -hmm. You only see mints at party. Meaning yeah, that somebody... Uh, yes, now that's what, I, I'm yeah. landing somewhere. So that's meaning that somebody has got, gotten a business out of this. Because all of a sudden, mints, right? In the, the last time I bought meat at a party, it was 50,000 naira and what's it called? For 5,000 naira. 5,000 naira. I said, for what? Because me, I just, I normally do experiment. I just ask them, you know, can, can I have the mint and all It's not like I, I spread the money anyway. I kept it in my bag. But it was 5,000 naira they charged me. Now, with this currency redesign, this last story we took that got me really crazy, a, a million naira, you paid 1.3 million naira for it. Uti, who is sharing 300,000? <laughs> who is sharing it? So, so there has to be, I, I do not believe that. I believe that this thing is a cartel. And there is no way the people that are in the banking industry are not, not conniving involved. with the people. So it might be CBN plus yes. the bank plus the, the see, officials. Did you see, Uwa, did you see the notice that was put out? Did you see the, the video that was put out of the officials um, of the CBN watching a, a bank load money into their ATM? Yes, did you see that video? yes, I saw that. So we have gotten to the extent where the CBN is monitoring the Naira to the point where we are watching you put it into the ATM mm. and you are asking the source of the means. Okay, let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. <laughs> let's take comments. Please, this line, is, we, we don't take calls on Fridays, I'm sorry. So if you want to really contribute into the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp. We don't take calls on Fridays. The phone has been buzzing, the WhatsApp line. We don't take calls, please. Thank you. Let's take comments. Okay, so um, from my comments, the reality is that CBN has not count um, has not count the cost of issuing the new the new note policy. The CBN governor has got this this one wrong and would stop blaming the commercial banks. And I'm looking forward to seeing one of the director of CBN going to village villages close to kidnappers and enclosed in Kaduna or Castina to distribute the new notes. Raphael from Zaria. Okay, this from this is from uh, our regular fan from <laughs> yesterday. We okay. missed his message. I said we must read it today. Go ahead. All right. Say good evening, my beautiful um, sisters. Of what are you saying? How is the naira scarcity affecting Nigerians? It is really affecting Nigerians. No shadow of doubt. Um, trust me. If this continues in about a week or two, I foresee a protest on the streets, and this protest may even be worse than NSAS. So we should brace ourselves up for uh, for the unexpected. Imagine me being denied my hard-earned money and right. Who does that? Since I was born, I have never seen such suffering and hardship. What kind of Nigeria is this? We can never be cash. We can never be a cashless society because we need cash to take care of responsibilities. I don't know if this is sabotage. This thing is really biting. It's really biting. Biting. Yeah, I mm. think that's where. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you Ilo. very much. Um, so, uh, Uti, Uti, let's let's go back to technology, oh. right? Let's go back to technology. So I, tr I attempted a, a transaction. You know, these kinds of accounts that they don't have account numbers, like maybe you're paying it to an embassy or something, that they don't have account numbers. You just go and pay a deposit in a bank and take your receipt from the bank. And I attempted that transaction, and they told me because I don't bank with them. Because I, I was really proud walking into the bank with my ATM card. And they said, they don't, because I don't bank with the set bank, I cannot make that payment. I, so it's either I get... Somebody that has an account, their phone, the person's account, the person will use their card, or I bring cash. So let's talk this issue of cashless policy, right? In the capacity that we have right now, do you guys believe that Nigeria is ready for cashless policy? <laughs> uh, uh, policy? Cashless right. transactions. Look at the video that I watched, I sent to you people on the group. We've not even started with, uh, we've not finished even issuing debit card. Amazon created a, a, a what's it called, a, a palm a, a payment solution. So you just walk into the, the supermarket, pick everything you want, and use your palm to pay the money. 
This is why even moving away from ATM card. Completely. Those are the societies that are ready for cashless policies. So is Nigeria ready? What do you ladies think? I'll come to with you. Absolutely not. We are not ready yet. <laughs> We're not ready. Uh, We're not even close because even close even with the to, banks, the banks are still system. struggling. Sorry, yes. the banks are still struggling to um, include certain um, the under underserved. We're still struggling to do that. The banks are still struggling to open um, uh, what they call this uh, accounts that doesn't really need a lot of documentation. Okay. We're still trying. To, the banks are still trying to do that. So talk talk less of full cashless policy. Considering the fact that the Naira note has not been redesigned in a while, it's just as if we were, ne we were not prepared for this. Hmm. The, this was, there was no preparation. Hmm. Because I, I remember this cashless economy, we've been preaching it since about just time. Right? And then we've gotten to the stage whereby it's, not, it's obvious that it, there's no, there have not been any type of adoption. No, the, inclusive, the financial inclusion that we've been trying to do, they're not included. Because these are the same people that will tell you that they don't want the 15 naira charges, they don't want the 100 naira charges, mm. the extra. You know, remember, remember the lady we were going to buy pepper soup from on, on Tuesday that we did not have cash to give her. And she said she does not want transfer. Because come to think about it, before you send that money, there's a charge. When you are withdrawing the money, there's a charge. And then the underserved, who are most of the people that are facing this chaos now, mm. are the ones that are going to bear the majority of the brunt. It's okay. not working. No, you want to um, say something? Yes. I'll come to it. Um, and so, we, we still have a problem of trust. Mm. Until people are able to trust the system, mm. this will not really work. Because if you go to some of the markets, so I've had conversations with these traders in the market, even one million, they prefer you pay them cash because number one, your transfer may get stuck, maybe mm -hmm. one or two days. And okay, this same week, for almost three days, I could not do a transfer. And that's where I almost got stranded because I had no cash. I could not do transfers on my account. What, so until we are able to build trust and this inclusion. So there are even some areas that don't still have banks in the rural areas. Mm. So what are the, how are they, they going to survive? A cashless so, yes. policy. Okay. So we are not ready. You are not ready. Uti, do you think we are ready? We can't avoid the value. That cashless brings. That technology brings mm -hmm. to everything. Let me not just even say finance. And we can't ignore that we've made great strides. You know, this is not the first rendition of this cashless policy. Mm. This is from the time when we started to um, add charges to cash deposits. This has been a progressive change, right? Mm -hmm. And we're still a long way off. But... You have to sort of paint an intertwined picture about our challenges. You know, it's easy to think that everything sort of is on its own lane and everything is parallel. You have a zero education system. You have a high, um, a high proportion of children not in school. You have adults that grow up to be semi-literate or fully illiterate. You then come into a situation of identity. Mm. A lot of human beings are walking around in Nigeria and nobody knows they exist because they don't exist on any database with no reference points. Mm -hmm. The countries where the day you pop out and see the sun and cry and say welcome to the world, they, give, they tag you immediately with an identification number. Let's be clear. Today, when you go, go to get your, um, what's it called, your IDs, Whatever information you want to give them, you can have, have a different date of birth on your NIN, you can have a different one on your voter's card, you can have, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, there are so many factors that have to come together for this thing to work. Now, the point about banks not being in the rural area, to do cashless, what do you need? You need some form of technology. Where is networking some of those places? Mm. Where is data quality in some of those places? We must forget that Nigeria is not a combination of Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt. Right? Mm -hmm. So we are a, we have to start, which is that we are on a journey. But I like when Glory also said we have to have open minds. There are a lot of people today who can leverage these solutions who just choose not to. If you fall into that bucket, you are really the people that need to have open minds. Mm. Like the businesses that can collect payments that don't want to. And I know that the infrastructure, there are challenges. 
Again, I can circle those challenges back to the lack of education. Absolutely. You see this Jaffa and this brain pain that we are, we are talking about is living from all these places and all the brains that are helping these systems to work. They are not getting on planes and leaving. So, and the entire ecosystem is at risk. And that is what is even affecting... So, it is, we must first of all do it. Sorry, have, it is laudable to want to do this mm. and to want to go cashless. It is. There are, let's, not, let's not kid. There are a lot of values to it. It yeah. makes a lot of sense. Which is why I still come back down to the, the, the data, like Glory said, the risk. The different stakeholders, the different types of people that you have, mm. we can't make decisions, like I said, thinking that the big cities are the only places. Mm. There are so many different people with different circumstances within this ecosystem, and the system has to serve them all. Yeah. You know, and when you cannot find it, when the basic needs are not there, people become feral, and that's what we are seeing. We're seeing heightened tension. We're seeing people fighting. Mm. I've seen so many videos of people be fighting in banking halls, at ATMs, people stripping, the frustrations and the tensions are real. Mm. And it could be avoided. You know, Oti, I was going to say that, you know, even with this structure, right, from the very first, if it was a, 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 a serious government that was thinking, already, you already knew that everybody needed an NIN. So what stops, at least when they had decided and they had started the process of registering people for an NIN, what stops the the, the, the what's it called government to start to take NIN for newborn babies like as they, they come up for your mama belly, they are registering you so at least that uh, yeah. this thing they may start working it back to other people that haven't gotten it so there is even no you know no progressive progressive thing. attempt yes. for us we don't even know our numbers How, when did we take uh, census last as a sure. country Long because why ago. they use it as political tools to want to um what's it called now to tell to say oh they have 10 million voters meanwhile they had maybe like two million mm -hmm. you know they want to exaggerate based on the, the numbers, numbers you know so these things are, it's not helping that you want to use this thing to your to a fa to favor a certain thing it's affecting other things. every other thing now look at what you said about jackpot jackpot is what is affecting all of us our bank apps are beginning beginning to behave like a what's it called yeah. ghost, ghost rider is on today. this today is off tomorrow because now most of the tech guys are seeing better opportunities and they're leaving the country so whether we like it or not as a country this is the time we must fix this country because if we if we don't we are damned that if, if we do god will help us let's take some co more comments please okay so so good evening um um uh, ladies i don't blame it's a plus ladies i don't blame cbm it's bank that made life unbearable to common Nigerian. I went to a, uh, a bank at by 6 a.m. Uh, to collect. Uh, oh, immediately, the bank official arrived at 8 a.m. And get mouth told me that the crowd that access don't have money. It's finished yesterday. I smiled and went back in faith. Some people started cursing them and asked them, where is our money? This is from Sami in Onicha. Wow. You know, Sami. I, I feel your pain, but please let's not get agitated to the point yeah, of violence. I yeah. think God beg Una. If Una go do violence, now we go suffer more. I they tell Una. <laughs> okay. Oh. Only, go God, only, only God knows the people that have already been injured or have even died based on all of this. Yes, go ahead. Um, okay, so my comment. Um, good evening, lovely presenters. Some Nigerians are terrible and greedy. CBN innovation is fantastic, but dubious. Reckless individuals are trying to frustrate the system. The truth of the matter is that we just have to keep pushing. Uti. Oh. Um, so, uh, I have a couple here. The first thing so said that the banker, I share your view that there are bad eggs in the banking system, just like in every other system in, in Nigeria. The money comes from the CBN, so you should know the people trading the money. Even some banks bribe CBN officials to receive means. It's a terrible country, and I hope we all have our PVC so we can fix the mess once and for all. Um, all of these don't have names, uh, so please put your names. The cashless policy is a good idea. My only concern is the fact that our ICT is not good enough. Cashless policy will reduce corruption to a large extent and mark the end of kidnapping. Uh, of the kidnapping business, we have to embrace it. Another one says the government can invest in ICT development. It's not too difficult. Once that's done, we are good to go. Um, and the final one says, my dear sisters in-house, CBN governor and presidency are pretending that they are helping 
Nigeria. Nigeria needs God more than ever. Um, thanks. That's Pastor Dala from Lafia Sorry. in Asarasi. Go ahead. Um, this person says, there is no cashless society in the world. What many countries do is to create opportunities for their citizens to use more credit cards in their transactions than much physical cash. We, can, we are not ready for such program in Nigeria without having the enabling systems in place like social security numbers for citizens. Alero, hmm. there's too many comments today. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, good evening. CBN released a statement that 100, that 100 naira, 50 naira, and 20 naira bills will be paid across across the counter. Why are these denominations unavailable? How how do these how do people get bundles of the new note to spray at parties? What's the challenge of the bank? CBN funding the uh, the ATMs and way forward. Number one, the banks are required to improve the online banking options as it's not very effective these days. Number two, CBN Commercial Bank, CBN and the Commercial Bank to ensure all ATMs are funded. The policy is good. We need to support it and make it work. This is from Somebody engineer. says the scarcity of Naira proves that our leaders are BBC. Best before <laughs> computer. Ah, <laughs> God help us. What do you have oh one more God. comment? There are two, the comments are just coming. Guys, we're sorry we can't take more comments. So this one says, um, <laughs> this one says, hello ladies, on February 1st, I, find myself, I found myself having to buy 20,000 for 22,000 from a POS operator before going to the market. I got 20 crisp 1,000 naira notes, so I spent 22k to get 20,000. I became conscious of the fact that 1k was now worth 1.1k. I became reluctant to spend the hard to come buy notes in the market. I'd be paying higher rates for everything. So I went to my customers and told them I had no cash and wanted to transfer. Mama Michael, who sells turkey, has an account, but Mama Stephanie, who sells Mikey and Reg, doesn't. Neither does Mama Daniel, who sells Titus. <laughs> Mama Michael accepted to have all their money transferred into her account. Mama Amara was stuck though. I buy Ubu, dry fish, etc. <laughs> Mama Michael said she didn't want to join money issues with her. Apparently, she's a troublemaker. Mm. Market politics. Market politics. I mean, like, the messages are pouring. We're sorry we can't take more comments. As I said yesterday, I will say it again today. If this scarcity continues, I will continue saying something about it. it. But thank you so much, ladies. We've had a fantastic conversation. Thank you, Uti. Thank you, Alera. And thank you, Glory. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. There's no complaint that is more common than that of scarcity of money. Oh. Ah, okay, well, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. Bye. Hi.